Hello, we'll animate flowers today. Let's create a curve on the curve's surfaces. Click, 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 and enter. We can press F8 in order to see the components and move some of them up to make the curve a little bit more 3D-ish. Press F8 again and we're done. And we have a nice smooth NURBS curve in the middle of the scene. Now we want to plant flowers on that curve. We need to go to modeling in order to see the generate menu. And the menu for generate is huge. The first section covers the XGen uh, th um, tools, which are basically about hair and grass, actually. And uh, from here, the paint effects start. Uh, paint effects tool, make paintable. That's a typical start would be to create an object where you want to paint on, for example, a landscape you modeled, and you want to paint grass on it, you make the surface paintable. That's the first step you usually do. Not in our case, because we already have a curve and we'll use a tool uh, in the next step. We just need to get a brush. And all flowers are brushes as well. The whole paint effect system is based on what is called brushes. So here in the content browser for the paint effects, we have flowers. And we'll pick, for example, the Daisy Marge large. We could paint the daisies now on that grid, which we don't want to do. Go back to generate and curve utilities and attach brush to curves. We could have more curves than one, but we only have one. So we attach the brush to the curves, meaning the we plant the daisies on our curve. And we see three of them. Uh, why three? Because the Mel script plants on a certain, uh, in a certain density and this is by default three for the daisy. It could be something totally different for a vine, for example, or for other plants. Um, and if we need more, we go to the sample density. Stroke shape, daisy large. The stroke shape is all, everything about that stroke here, that where they are planted, Daisy Large is about the plant itself. So the stroke shape has a display quality if we have thousands of flowers and uh, the viewport gets a little bit heavy because of the, all the calculations, uh, we would reduce this. It doesn't make sense here, but um, it reduces uh, things to uh, a very, very rudimentary uh, view here. But uh, what we need here is more flowers, definitely. And instead of three, if we pump up the sample density from one to three, we have nine. And uh, if we change this value to four, we have uh, even more of them. And um, here we have the, f the first option to animate things. And uh, that's under the section of end bounds. Uh, it will show that they will move, the plants will move along that curve. Well, yeah, yeah, they will move along that curve. That's basically what they do. And uh, we can uh, animate this by moving this slider here, setting keyframes for the slider. So they just basically move along that curve and off they go. Uh, we can do the same thing with the maximum clip here. So they move from this side, from this direction, back to the very beginning. Or we can do something in between. So we have only three flowers now in the middle because our minimum clip is set up, uh, raised to uh, 0 0.3 and the maximum clip is reduced to 0 0.5 as opposed to the original um, setup like this. So this is a very powerful thing to make uh, the plants move along a curve. Let's go to the daisy large now, the tab, and up here we have a global scale. This is important if you have other objects in the scene which you usually have. For example a house. Imagine the house is that big. Then the flowers are much too large. In that case you go to global scale and reduce the size 
of each plant, of all the plants altogether. And um, now, of course, we don't have uh, plenty of the plants, so we need to go back to the stroke shape tab in order to get more. But we're quite happy uh, we don't have a reference here in the scene. That's what global scale is about. Now we have a twist here, which is nice. Um, you can twist the plants, which means rotate around their stem. And of course you can animate this. You can animate the twist raid as well. Look at the top of the plants, what they're doing now. This is really lovely. And um, the twist randomness, that means uh, the whole effect is a bit softer when you reduce this value here. So lots of values to play with here, really. And of course, you can animate them all together. Let's animate the twist just for fun. Frame 1, right mouse click, set a key. Frame 120, actually, let's go to 200 um, here and uh, set the same keyframe and go to the middle and move this all the way up and set another key. So basically that's what we have, which is already looking very naturally. And the other thing which makes plants actually grow is down here in the flow animation section. Flow animation. Here I would recommend you to increase the f uh, flow speed to maximum, which is one, and check all three um, checkboxes here. And now you have two parameters. One is the start time in seconds, it's that's not in frames, and the end time in seconds as well. So um, let's reduce this to minus one second so we have a few plants already here can you see them yeah they're right here uh, so we're starting sort of uh, before the actual animation starts and we set the end time not to 1000 seconds but to say five seconds and now when the, we run the animation this happens the flowers start to grow and to rotate. Last thing, in the viewport you see them quite delicately and they look just good in the viewport when you don't select them like this. But you can't render them using Arnold because uh, the description of the plants is a typical description for paint effects. You have to turn them into meshes, which is uh, you select the stroke basically and you go to modify and convert the paint effects to polygons. That's what you would typically do. And then you have basically the same plants with the same animation and um, they are renderable in, um, in Arnold. But we can render them in Maya now. Let's create um, a plane where they're all kind of sitting on. They actually they're sitting on the uh, on the on the curve. But uh, we just want a little bit of a background. Now we go to the render settings, and instead of Arnold, we choose Maya software. And now we render this thing, and this is what we get. The paint effects are quite old mod module in Maya, uh, but still very powerful. And uh, as you can see, they're doing a very nice job here.